Today we're flying out the F10 F8 Cougar at 9.0 and this thing is actually pretty all right. There are some pretty big flaws with it that you want to keep in mind like the high speed compression because it's not gradual it will be instant and the second thing will be the retention when you maneuver at all because this thing is very similar to the Super Mystia B2. The acceleration is not the best, the energy bleed is pretty bad and at low speed it turns alright. The problem is by the time you get to the low speed engagement your enemy will probably be going twice your speed because you just simply lose that much more energy than your opponent does. And with a mix at 8.3 as well and especially at 9.0 you are a little bit more of a support fighter. You got the 4 aim 9 bs which are pretty strong, you got the a and M3s which are amazing but you're not the best kind of fighter performance wise. I'm going head on with the mix 17 now. I got a crit and the opening here is actually pretty important. I try to go down because if he goes down with me he will pick up more speed than me and this way his loop will be wider and I can try to cut inside of it. And here you can see that I'm simply just pulling up after him. I'm kind of getting a better position here. I'm just simply slower than him and by being slower than him I will be able to stay on a 6. But being slower than someone is not always a good thing because if he plays it right he can simply either fly away. Luckily you have the aim 9 b so if he tries to fly away straight up I can missile him. But you can tell that the energy difference here is actually pretty substantial luckily i crit him and i hit him again so he's gonna bleed more speed doing any kind of maneuver and i'm dead on the six now and looking at my team looking around i want to kill this guy as fast as i can so with a little bit of luck he's gonna fly right into the aim 9b he doesn't unfortunately if he had then that would have been an easy cleanup now i'm diving up after the mig 17 I'm compressing a little bit and you can tell it's very hard for me to get guns on luckily he rolls back in rather a little bit to the left Hit him center mass and he blows up. And that's kill number one. And right now I don't want to go straight into that furball over there. Because if there's someone above you in this thing. Someone with more energy that runs you down. You will lose a hell of a lot of energy. If you have to go defensive in this thing. You lose so much speed by maneuvering. That you will be sitting duck for even the, the one guy on your six. Where the, to the point where you basically stall out in front of him. Or second guy comes in because you're so slow. And you're a very easy target. But now we're going to help this Ki-200 with his furball and there are some things i want you to keep in mind and that's going to be again the compression as well as the roll rate and the rudder which are a little bit wonky the nose in general goes exactly where you want it to go but it's not in a very snappy manner so it can be a little bit of a pain to get your guns on target but you will see that very soon here because there's going to be a lot of enemies around and i want to kill these guys as quickly as i can so i will be holding the trigger down a little bit more than i'm used to drag a little line over him shoot just a little bit too low he flies over it and he's extending away. And now I really want to see who I can engage. J29 dodges my head on. I compress. Can get the lead in. Can get the lead on him. Go for the MiG-15. Can get the lead in. Go head on with the MiG-15. Spray a little bit in the head on. All of that missed. But when I went to the server replay. As well as the client replay. That actually sparked about 5 shells of his plane. So I think I just went straight through him. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. But in the end it doesn't really matter. But I think he should have been dead there. Turn back in. And now, who do we shoot first? MiG-15 is going to be on my 6. He's going to be there regardless. I want to kill someone as fast as I can. MiG-15 is going very slow. Prime target. He's dead. J-29 isn't as much of a threat. And I can gun him anyway. And that's kill number 2. Try to pull in for the Yak-30. Don't have enough turn rate for that one. Now I want to make sure that I go defensive for that MiG-15. Don't want to go too abrupt. Because the more abrupt I go, the more speed that I lose. And I don't want to lose too much speed. And that's also why you won't see me use my flaps a lot. Because my sustained turn rate will actually go lower with my flaps down. Because I will lose so much speed, so much faster, that it will just be hanging from the air. Now I'm going only 480. But at the same time, they're busy killing the Ki-200. So I try to turn back in. But MiG-15 is now going back on me. So I'm going to let the Ki-200 1v1. The actually is on fire at this point. But I want to reverse this MiG-15. Not sure how much fuel the Ki-200 has left. I almost got hit from very long range there. Pretty impressive shot or pretty lucky. Not sure which one it is. Try to pull in. Just again, not enough lead. Maybe without the missiles. But now he's going straight up. Shoot a little bit in his flight path. Hold the trigger down a bit. Because I want to make sure that he dies right there. AM3 say no. And that's going to be kill number four. And now I have some time to breathe. Get some shots on my six. Not sure what it was, but it's the dead MiG-15. J29 left. It's 2v1. So we should be alright. I still have two missiles left. I know one guy is in a bomber in the enemy team. And he, he has a gunner. So I probably want to use the missile for that. Because I don't want to go anywhere near an IL-28 gunner. Because he might just screw me up completely. And if I go RTB after killing this guy. The MiG-17 is landing right now. 
will have a massive energy advantage on me and I don't want that either. So I probably have to just go straight in after killing this guy. So I want to make sure they at least have one missile left. Because I want to kill this guy as fast as I can. Just so that I can start focusing on the MiG-15. J-29 is not sure what he's trying to do. Maybe he didn't see the missile. Maybe he was too busy looking at the Kia 200 because he was closer. But I figure that shooting the missile at a guy that's running away trying to stay fast instead of engaging us. He's probably not going to be too aware of his surroundings. And it turns out he wasn't. And now we're going to do exactly what I told you just now. We are going to be rushing the MiG-17. That's going to be probably landed. Because I want to start this fight with an energy advantage. MiG-17 on equal energy versus this thing. Especially if he's running min fuel. And most MiG-17s will be. You are not going to win it. You might turn very well. But the MiG-17 just has so much retention, so much energy, and so much acceleration, as well as turn rate, as well as stall control. It has everything in a 1v1. You do not want to 1v1 those things fairly. And if he wants to, he can simply run away from me after he messes up. Go ahead on with the TU-14, actually. It was an IL-28, but it's essentially the same plane. Looking where the enemy is, MiG-17 doesn't seem to be on the horizon. So now I want to kill this guy as fast as I can for two reasons. The first one will be he can't intervene in the 1v1 because he might, he has guns, he has a gunner and with the missile I can simply stay out of range and make sure he dies. And the second reason is right here. I can pop a blind hunt and by popping a blind hunt I will know exactly where he is and I don't get jumped because I don't want to take a guess if he's on the runway, if he's sitting in a cloud, if he's behind me. Right now I see him and I can plan accordingly. And what I will do is put it in a very slight climb. He's taking off right now. If I go straight at him, I might win the first turn. But if I don't hit him right there, I will lose it. So I'd rather stay above him and convert all my speed and altitude. Because the slower I go, the less speed I lose by turning. But I also don't want to go so slow that he can simply pitch up after me and kill me instantly. It's essentially the same thing as I said in the Wyvern video. I will put all my speed into altitude first. And then once I start turning, instead of losing 300 kph because I'm going 900, I will only use 150 kph because I'm only going 500 so that trade-off is a lot better because after losing that speed I can simply dive in again so right now I'm gonna bait him into the head-on because I want him to pitch up for me because the more he pitches up for me the more speed he will lose now he's pitching up for me and I will go up with him and look at my energy it's just falling down it's just dropping very fast MiG-17 luckily doesn't have the most amount of speed here now I will use my flaps once to get the shot in and he's simply too low on energy and when you're very low on energy with the F9 ever on your 6, you're essentially not going to reverse it ever. And that's just simply because this plane turns well enough, but at the same time it also loses so much speed, it's basically auto air braking you. So this thing will just stay behind you and the MiG-17 is not using its air brakes, not using its flaps. He's not going to make you overshoot. What he can do is make you stall out, spiral you up and then stall above you and reverse you that way. But he's not going to force a literal overshoot. At high speed he might because you're compressing, but at lower speeds it's simply not happening. And even if he does that spiral thing where he stalls you out, he will probably have to maneuver through your guns once or twice to even get you in a position to do that. And you don't want to go through the guns of an F9, F8 because the roll rate is good and the pitch authority is good as well. So going near the gun is mostly not a good idea, especially at speeds where it's pretty easy to aim. And then it's also backed up by four A&M trees. Wuhei, 7 kills, big kill number good. That's not what it's about today. Because I wanted to show you a support plane that comes in and doesn't actually outperform anyone. But still manages to wipe the enemy team that way. Hope you all enjoyed it. Here's the scoreboard for everyone that likes that kind of thing. And to the rest I say, see you in the next one.